it's none other than uh, 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 Moses Ziela from Zim Zambia. He is the personal ministries director there in the Midlands. Oh yes. We have been led by the great shepherd. And this morning, I can't wait to hear what the Lord has store for us for the last verse, which says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Oh, Pastor Moses, Ziela, please take us through. The Lord is with you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mark Kunene. Um, it's really a blessing and a privilege to be with you uh, this morning again. Uh, good morning, saints of the living God, and a happy Sabbath to you all. I know Sabbath is a very special day for the virtual prayer ministry. Our emphasis and our focus usually is uh, Thanksgiving, and I think we will not deviate from that um, emphasis. As we close our series on Psalm chapter 23, experiences with the shepherd. About 3000 years ago, <laughs> David wrote one poem that should help us deal with the troubles of life today. Only 118 words, if you read or counted from the King James Version. And I dare say these are the most familiar words of all the Psalms. Reading this Psalm shall kindle a ray of hope for the hopeless, shall bring healing to the hurting, will guarantee help for the helpless, encouragement to the discouraged, and will provide strength for those who are weak. This morning, allow me to share just one particular devotional thought from verse six. Verse six reads, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I will read that again, surely Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This morning, allow me to share and say that this in verse 6 gives us David's greatest desire. Verse six gives us David's greatest desire. The last time, verse five, we introduced one of the most delightful and enjoyable scenes in the entire Bible. God the shepherd, God the comforter becomes God the host. But there is something else even bigger as we get into verse six. He is not just God the shepherd, not just God the comforter, not just God the host. In verse 6, he is God the father of the house. God the father of the house. And this morning I am saying verse 6 literally expresses the psalmist's greatest desire. Read with me Psalm 27, verse 4. There David expresses himself and says, One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. This was David's life's quest to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of his life, to behold the beauty of the Lord. 
And David begins verse 6 by giving us the word surely, surely speaks of truth and certainty of this blessed state. David begins by saying, surely he is certain he knows it is truth. And it is ratified by the living word, the promise of God, and it is sealed as a matter of perpetual record. He says, surely, certainty. Then he says, goodness and mercy shall follow me. In other words, shall pursue me. In fact, correctly translated, to pursue me. In other words, shall chase after me, shall run after me. Charles Spurgeon says, goodness and mercy are God's footmen. Giving us a picture of early English noble men sitting in a carriage with two footmen on each side. The footmen would ensure that the noble man arrives safely to his destination. The footmen would ensure they would clear the path as the carriage would move on. The footmen would prepare the noble man's meals. The footmen would always look out after the noble man. The footmen would make sure everything goes according to the plan. My brothers and sisters, just like David, we also need goodness and mercy. His goodness supplies me. His goodness helps me. His goodness provides for me. And yet his mercy soothes me. His mercy heals me. His mercy restores me. His mercy pardons me. I am saying this morning, verse 6 literally expresses the psalmist's greatest desire. Yes, after the banquet prepared by God himself, a fourth picture unfolds before us. God the host becomes God the father of the house. The father who will always be with his children. In fact, verse 6 gives us glimpses of Revelation chapter 21. When you read from verse 3 and 4, the Bible says, And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. Allow me to give it my own uh, touch, the same verse uh, from my own version. Behold, the house of God is with men. And the father will dwell with them. And they shall be the Father's people, God himself will be with them in the house and be their God. You see, friends, the entire book of Revelation presents to us a very remarkable mixture of shade and light, a mixture of prosperity and adversity, a mixture of mercy and judgment. But now as we get into chapter 21, at the close of it all, the day breaks and the shadows flee away. And a new world now appears, the house. The former things have passed away. And he that sat upon the throne, the Bible says, said, behold, I make things or I make all things new. In a little while, we shall see the perfect holiness and happiness of that world, the house. This is the house, the new heaven and the new earth. This is the house, the new Jerusalem from heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. This is the house, new and perfect. This is the house 
beautified with all perfection of wisdom and glory. Verse 20, chapter 20, 21, verse 5 in Revelation continues and says, And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Yes, beloved, this is the house, and the shepherd's presence is the glory of the house. This is the house, and the shepherd dwells with all his children, never to be interrupted ever again. This is the house. The people of God are blessed to commune with the Father directly. No more temple, no more intermediary. This is the house, his immediate presence with them, his love fully manifested to them and his glory put upon them will be their perfect peace and perfect joy. Verse six literally expresses the psalmist's greatest desire. And in the house, God and mankind dwell forever under the same roof. Yes, beloved, in the house, the sheep and the shepherd dwell forever under the same roof. In the house, God at last is established as the father of the house. In the house, time becomes eternity. Psalms 23 Verse six, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Verse six literally expresses the psalmist's greatest desire. Verse six literally expresses my greatest desire. Maybe, just maybe, verse six literally expresses your greatest desire. Shall we pray? Gracious, kind, and loving Father, we thank you for the blessings of this Sabbath day. We thank you for the blessing of your word that has been spoken to each one of us throughout the whole week. We thank you, O oh God, for this privilege that you have given us that we can hear and we can respond. We thank you, Lord, for the assurance that you give us. Surely, mercy and goodness, goodness and mercy shall follow me, shall follow us, shall be with us, shall pursue us, shall not leave us alone, shall continually come after us and run for us until we are found in the house of the Lord. We thank you, O oh God, for your graciousness, your goodness, and your mercy. Be with us now, even as we break up in groups for prayer and thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, amen.